Hello friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. This is part one of shopping cart using ASP.NET Blazor server. In our previous video, which was the introduction part, in that part we have gone through all the different screens which we are going to develop as a part of this video series tutorial. So in this part, let's start with the actual development process. So I have opened Visual Studio 2019 and I just have to click on create a new project. Here we have to select Blazor Server App. If you can't find it here, we simply have to select all project types and search here for Blazor, Blazor Server App. As I'm already using it, so it's showing in the recent project templates. So when we click on this Blazor Server App, click on Next. And here I'll just put a demo 5. And we can name the project as shop dot admin and the entire as entire solution as shopping cart and click on next here we can remove configure for https and here we can select dot net 5 current you are not selecting dot net core 3.1 because there are some few components which are only available in as far as the web application or the website part of the project is concerned, we are going to use .NET 5 current. And uh, here authentication type we are keeping is just none. Click on create. So here you can see in this the solution is shopping cart and we have this shop.admin so as the name suggests this will be the admin panel uh, UI similarly we will add one more project add right click on the shopping cart add a new project and it will be of same type blazor server app same steps we have to repeat simply we have to name this as shop.web this will be the website which will be like the user panel where uh, the user can use or use the shopping cart shop.web click on next same things we have to repeat again so we have two now shop.admin and shop.web similarly we have to create the api now add a new project and this time we have to select ASP.NET Core Web API and we'll be going to name it as shop.api click on next and here we are going to use .NET Core click on create so we have admin shop.api and uh, now we have to add one class library two class libraries actually one for the logic and one for the data models so here we are going to use this class library next and we are going to name it as shop.logic click on create and it will be .NET Core And one more we have to add, add a new project, same class library, next, data models. click on next, create. Okay, so we have created five projects inside our shopping cart solution. So as for the cleaning part, We'll simply delete the default one from the data models we'll delete class one from the api we'll delete this weather forecast controller and uh, this weather forecast dot cs and from the startup wherever we have where 
from the program.cs okay there's nothing we have we haven't used that one and uh, from the admin we have to delete this data because this is like the default structure so we don't need that and here we can delete this weather forecast service and this data folder we have deleted and from the web part we have to again delete the data folder and uh, from the startup we have to delete the weather forecast and the data so once this is done let's close all the tab go to this and let's build the project okay so we have few errors okay so we have this fetch data inside the pages we have this fetch data we are going to delete it and from the pages of the web shop.web we have to delete the fetch data because it was referencing the data folder okay so the build has succeeded now simply we just have to clean it once okay so right click on the project solution properties and we have to set multiple projects this we have to start api also we have to start and the web also we have to start and apply so let's run it once Okay. okay so let's simply run it once again click on start so here we can see shop.web the default template has been loaded this is the api and this is the shop.admin so all the three startup projects have been launched let's stop it and here in the api we need to have two controllers so let's add two empty controllers let's close this add new controller api controller empty and we'll be clicking on add we'll name it as admin controller so one for the admin panel and one for the user and let's add one more add controller So we have added two controllers here and uh, this is the basic setup in the data models we will have add two folders one is the models and other one be custom models in the shop.logic we will add one folder for services So this will be the service which will be interacting with the database in shop.web we'll add one add folder services and in admin also we'll be adding one folder services so in this service in the shop.web services folder we'll add one service add a new class 
and we'll name it as our friend and service and to implement that we'll have an interface of it i front end service same way for the admin we'll have admin service add a new class it will be admin panel service and the interface of it I admin panel service and this I admin I admin panel service similarly in the UI shop.web we have to inherit I front end service so this this is the basic structure and uh, this API will be referencing the data models so the flow will be like the from the admin panel the request will go to the API from the API the request will go to the logic and from the logic it will make use of data models and interact with the database same for web from web the request will go to the API from API it will go to the respective user controller from there it will go to the logic and from logic it will try to interact with the respective data models and get the data or save the data into the database the database we have not yet created so here now we will simply reference the other layers so in shop.api we will add a dependency add project reference that will be of data models and logic and uh, this admin will add a reference of data models and only data models and in the shop.web will add a reference of data models okay so this is the basic structure and the basic interaction part so in our next video tutorial we'll go through how we'll start the actual development process of the screens of the admin panels so that was it see you in the next video you can subscribe or like share in our channel and if you have any doubt you can put a comment so that we'll try to reply to that so thank you for watching this video see you in the next video